Hey, Ryan, how's everything? Uh, exactly as you would imagine. Barons keep me busy. They weren't kidding when they said she's a hard ass. What did you hear? A lot of rumors going around of how she's sending insubordinate workers to the front line. And by insubordinate, I mean people who ain't willing to work 18 hours a day. Every day. What happened after you started your camp? Honestly, not that much. At least not in the beginning. When we gave up on the idea of getting in touch with anyone, we just tried to adapt. Temperatures fell, we had to scavenge for food. All of a sudden, that became our life. Didn't you try to reach home? Some people did. Most of us were scared of what we'd find if we did get home, so we conveniently said we're stranded here anyways and stayed. Well, I know how stupid it sounds, but we managed to have fun in our little commune. I still had my guitar with me. We talked a lot about how we're gonna be famous, because we're the only living band in the world. You played in a band. I did. One of the few things I was better at than Tucker. He didn't have much talent, but he loved the idea of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Especially the first two. We were just stupid kids, not realizing what was going on. We paid the price for it the first time we saw a tin can. I was tuning my guitar when I heard a strange noise. I found out later that it was a T-400. Must have heard me play. It didn't even have the decency to look scary. Maybe if it did, we wouldn't have just stood there when it started firing. What did you do? I froze. I didn't run to help. I didn't scream. I didn't even move. I just stood there, like a coward. A tin can got Tucker with a single bullet. Bam! Just like that. Seven other people died before we finally destroyed that thing. Ironically enough, I was the one who delivered the final blow. Safe to say, it was the beginning of a new era. Over here! I'm telling you, I saw something. What's happening, Private? A couple of aerials flew in and dropped containers full of metals. They started shooting while our defense systems did nothing. What about the doctor? Where's Alvin? He's still out there. All right. There's one more thing. Before I got hit and dragged here, I saw something. I'm not sure, but I think it was one of our own soldiers that led Skynet's attack.
Sergeant, we're outnumbered, and they keep bringing more wounded. We don't stand a chance. We have to evacuate. Is Alvin still there? He is, sir. Then we're not leaving. We have to bring him back and see what the hell is going on with those defenses, and brief Commander Baron on what's happening here. I'm moving out. You stay here with the wounded. You want me to break the radio silence? At this point, it doesn't matter, does it? Understood. Go ahead, sir. You two follow me. We have to reach those defense systems. Yes, sir. Lead the way! This way! Good to see you, Sergeant. What's the status? We've got a defensive perimeter set up just down the road. Doesn't seem to be working. Sky now dropped reinforcements behind their backs. Now they're between a rock and a hard place. All right, we need to reach our guys. Let's clear the way. Keep moving! Here they come! T-47, watch out! Flank it! Take off those smaller units! Now! Shoot before it reboots!
speed up that hill. We'll stay here to keep Skynet away from you. We need to rescue the dock before those tanks reach us! Oh shit! We're too late! They're already here! Wait here! I'll go get the doctor! Oh my god, I'm actually glad to see you. What happened here? Why are the defense systems not working? They are working, but their target filtering has been reset to non-hostile. One of Baron's messengers came with the order to temporarily change it, so I did! Baron's messengers, we need to leave now. Yes, let's do that. I'm all for that. Are you all right? We need to move. You don't have to tell me twice. Escort secured. Are you all right? We need to move. You don't have to tell me twice. Escort secured. Gah! Go! I don't like this. I don't like any of this. Ariel! Okay, go! It's turning around! Right behind us! Don't look back! Good idea! You go talk to Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. Lay still. Don't move. Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. Rivers, 
You want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Uh, all right, this is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that- All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. Now that you mention it... What? One of our soldiers said that it looked as if one of our guys led Skynet's attack. That only supports my case. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. It's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. Killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. <laughs> I sure made his day. That huge guy. Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to Perry? Skynet got hold of our position. We had to leave our shelter. There were a lot of casualties, and he was one of them. He died a soldier. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first medal I ever destroyed. Sounds like you were late in joining the Destroy Skynet campaign. Before that, it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time. Jacob, got a minute? <coughs> Jacob. How are the wounded doing? 
The few that came back, they're doing fine. We patched them up, and at this point we're just sitting and waiting. What's in your mind? Ever since you asked me about Peter, I can't stop thinking about him. Like a teenage girl. <laughs> That's your fault, young man. Are you thinking about anything in particular? About the day we first met. It was long before Judgment Day. I was getting coffee on my way to school. I noticed him because he was buying tea in a coffee shop. I don't know why, but that made me smile. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe I should stop thinking about him. He's... he's probably dead by now. God knows he can't take care of himself. Do you want to find him? Sometimes I think I should drop everything and go. I would get an earful from Baron, but she's nothing I can't handle. Anyway, what I didn't tell you before is that during Judgment Day, I lost a child. Our child. I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I like to blame the machines for that. I think that Peter felt with Taylor we were given a second chance. God, he's still out there waiting for me, isn't he? Probably sitting in his rocking chair back in our house in Hollywood Hills. Oh, where the hell are you, Peter? What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? Hey, <laughs> glad to see you alive. And thanks for sticking your neck out for us. I wanted to tell you that, you know, just in case. Hey, are you all right? We just got the news about the attack. They're getting closer, aren't they? Can I see your hardware? Can I see your hardware? <coughs> huh, wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. The truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. I see that Patrick's doing better. He is. He's a fighter. Certainly has more courage than I do. Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, 
will sound stupid, but I just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick hurt, I start to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. But don't worry, I changed my mind since. Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You have a fan. <coughs> Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. <coughs> Thank you. It means a lot. Are you kidding? It's the least I can do for helping us all this time. If you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually I do. Exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. <coughs> Father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. But what did you think about it? I didn't know what to think. Travelers would bring all sorts of gossip with them. But this kept coming back. When Patrick asked me if I was scared, I lied and said that I wasn't. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by. And if they did, they weren't always friendly started to notice things going missing. Little things, at first. People got nervous. And with time, it even got to my father. What do you mean? Well, for one thing, he stopped making jokes. It had never been as quiet at the house as it had been back then. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door. and started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. I wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. <laughs> <laughs> 